I'm Dane, and this is Dan Explains. The Shroud of Turin has been in the news again in the last few weeks. If you clicked on this video, I'm pretty sure you know what the Shroud of Turin is, but for those who stumbled upon here some other way, the Shroud of Turin is allegedly the burial cloth of Jesus. A few weeks ago, a study came to light that used a new technique to date the Shroud, and dated it to the first century. So, in line with Jesus, this conflicts with a carbon dating test done in the 80s which showed the Shroud to be from the Middle Ages, which has made many scientists dismiss the Shroud as a forgery. If you know anything about carbon dating, it's pretty accurate, especially with organic material. So, how could these two tests come up with very different results? And, which one is correct? Let me explain. The new test that dated the Shroud of the 1st century is a test called Wide Angle X-Ray Scattering, or WAXIS for short. WAXIS has actually been around for quite some time as a technique for studying the structure of materials. It's only recently started to be used as a dating technique. Interestingly, the study that everyone is talking about is two years old now, but it used WAXIS to examine the level of degradation in the flax fibers in the Shroud. The same examination was done on other materials from various time periods to act as reference points. The shroud most closely matched the linen from Mitzana in Israel from around 55 AD. Another recent study, which may be the reason the shroud started to get in the news recently, showed that the flax that makes up the linen in the shroud is from a variety that was common in the Middle East in Jesus' time. A bonus for waxes is that waxes dating is non-destructive to the sample. Well, carbon dating is destructive. Anyway, so how does all this jive with the carbon dating that was done back in the 80s? Carbon dating actually kind of works similar to waxes in that it looks for degradation of carbon. But instead of looking for decay of organic matter, it's looking for decay of radioactive substances. Specifically, a radioactive form of carbon known as carbon-14. Carbon-14 is consistently replenished in the environment through cosmic radiation striking nitrogen atoms in the atmosphere. So, the amount of carbon-14 in the environment, theoretically, should stay pretty steady, since it's made at a known rate and decays at a known rate, versus non-radioactive carbon-12, which doesn't decay. If an animal or plant is alive, it's constantly collecting carbon from the environment. The whole time it's alive, its carbon-14 ratio should stay about the same versus carbon-12. So if you find something made of carbon, you should be able to calculate its age with a simple formula based on the decay rate of carbon-14. Since you always start with the same ratio, and it decays at a predictable rate. Now this should seem to be a more accurate way to calculate an age than waxes for anything made out of carbon. Waxes needs reference points, and carbon dating does not. There are a few flies in the ointment with this though. One is a more general issue with carbon dating. Something that should have too much an effect longer term, but could have a large impact short term. There have been several cosmic events in the past that create sudden increases in carbon-14. Basically, if something happens near Earth that exposes Earth to more cosmic rays than usual, the amount of carbon-14 being made increases a lot, throwing off the ratio. Several of these events have occurred in the last few thousand years although the effects is only temporary. So, long-term dating, as long as the amount of cosmic rays the Earth receives has stayed steady over millions of years, should still be accurate. However, the Shroud is fairly young in carbon dating terms. So if such an event just happened to have happened around the time the Shroud was made, the increase in carbon-14 would make the Shroud seem much younger than it is. But we don't know. The second thing, which is specific to the shroud, and surprisingly few people mention, is that the section that was used for carbon dating was, of course, a non-critical corner piece, which was later found to be made of cotton and not flax linen. Now, that might not seem important, except cotton wasn't common in the Middle East in Jesus' day, and they wouldn't have used two types of material to make a single monolithic piece like the shroud. Microscopic analysis of the shroud in the area showed a mix of non-connected fibers of cotton and linen consistent with the repair technique common to the wealthy in the Middle Ages, called French reweaving, where the damaged area of cloth is partially unwoven and then another repair piece is painstakingly woven in thread by thread to create a seamless repair. 
Repairs like this are long forgotten these days because textiles are cheap and human labor is not. But the opposite was true for the wealthy in the Middle Ages. So it seems very likely that the piece of the shroud that was taken for carbon dating was a damaged choir piece that was repaired using reweaving with cotton in the Middle Ages. So, any carbon dating done on that piece would date to that period. Does any of this prove that the shroud is a burial cloth of Jesus? No, but it does eliminate a lot of other options. Besides, why would people try to carefully preserve a burial shroud for 2,000 years if it wasn't actually significant? Thank you for watching. If you like this video and other video topics ranging from theology to science, please press the like button. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon to get extra content and special perks. Link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week.